100 years, St. Mark's United Methodist Church in Lima is celebrating 100 years of serving the Lord in this community. It's been a year of celebrations leading up to a big event coming up October 6th. But first, let's take us back 100 years. Pastor Ted Bible from St. Mark's United Methodist Church is with us today. 100 years, a lot has happened in that time. 100 years, a lot has happened in that time. And it's amazing, 1919, uh, the Lyman Missionary Society, uh, a group of women, got together and thought, you know, we need to have a Protestant presence mm -hmm. on the north end of Lima. So north end being defined then as, as, as west of Main Street and north of the Pennsylvania Railroad. So, so the, the woman who was the president of the society, she went and she spoke to uh, the pastor at Trinity Church, which is today Trinity United Methodist mm -hmm. Church, and I don't know whether she went there to ask permission mm. <laughs> or whether she went there just to ask, you know, is this a good idea? But what amazes me is that this conversation started in the spring of 1919 and she was given, you know, a blessing or encouragement or whatever to proceed. They had three meetings in May and then on that third meeting they bought a house <laughs> and that house became known as the North Broadway Chapel. And uh, we, have a, we have a picture of it, of it, of it right here. The North Broadway Chapel, we've got 95 people in this picture. One man One and man. 94 women. Yep. Their, their first Sunday school class consisted of 94 people. And I'm guessing from that picture, the majority of them were women and children. You know, so that's just kind of amazing as to how that all started. And, you know, they were at the North Broadway Chapel for a couple of years. And then they um, were given some uh, property further on Grand Avenue and it became the, uh, the Grand Avenue uh, Tabernacle. Mm -hmm. And so it started off as, as, as tents, as they were worshiping there, and then they built this tabernacle. Tents, really? Tents. 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 Huh. They worshiped in tents. Tent meeting. Tent the, meetings. Exactly the way, I mean. Exactly. The, the words mean it, tent meeting. Tent yeah. meetings. The, they, were, they were there, they, they did that, uh, and then they built a wooden structure that they called the Tabernacle in 1924 and it didn't last long it caught on fire and burned down <laughs> unfortunately uh, or fortunately because uh, later that year they acquired four lots on the corner of Murthy and North Metcalf which is where our current location is today and they built then went about building a structure uh, interestingly enough it wasn't built as a quote-unquote church although they had church there it was built as a community center and so they did um, they had all kinds of community activities there within that, within that structure. And what's interesting about that is, you know, today our church is very community focused. Mm -hmm. We do a lot of community outreach kinds of things through our food pantry, through our clothing store and other resources. So in some ways it's kind of interesting to think that we've, you know, gone back to our early roots, right? You yeah, know, it, really early 1920s. it really sounds like way at the beginning, you know, these ladies recognized we there's a mission focus here. We need to reach out into this community. We want to go to the north area. Right. And those seeds they planted 100 years ago, it has to be amazing to go back and look at the history and see how that has grown over these decades. Yeah, I mean, the reality is, is that the church, like many churches, we've had our peaks and valleys. Mm. You know, this, this community center was built to seat 630 people, which is, amazing and there was times within our history where we regularly had 300 and 400 people in attendance on, on worship Sundays. Mm. Uh, it's not that today. Um, it, it, the neighborhoods change, the demographics of people and how they go to churches change. Mm -hmm. There's a lot more churches on the north end today than what there mm -hmm. was then in regards to Protestant churches. So all that's changed a great deal. So they've ebbed and flowed with the, what the community has needed over the years. Um, You've got a lot of historical stuff sitting here, but I know you've got a picture right here. Let's jump back about 20 years. We're about the 60s right now is what we're talking about. Let's jump back, though, to the 40s. Yeah. Tell me about this picture that you've had, 1944. 1944, the church was very involved in uh, scouting. They had lots of boys and Girl Scout troops that met at the church. And uh, we have people who are members of our church today who were are there in part because of scouting hmm. back then. And so this picture is, it's really interesting, is that um, I was born and raised in Lima, okay? So it's great being a pastor mm -hmm. of your, in, in, in your own community. Uh, but there's a guy in this picture, he's standing right here. That's my uncle. 
And he lived on Ewing, which was a, 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 about one street over and a couple blocks down. And uh, he's in that picture. And, and he told me that uh, one of the things that he did as a scout there was to help dig out the basement. When the church was built or the community center was built, it did not have a basement or it had a very small basement. And so over the years, they wanted to occupy that space, so they had to dig it out. And so one of the jo jobs that these scouts had, you know, to earn, you know, merit badges or whatever, yeah. community service was to help dig out that basement. And is that basement still in use now? Yes, we use that all the time. <laughs> <laughs> all the time for, you know, we, we, we store, we have our dining room down there, so that's where we're going to have our lunch for on our October 6th. You know, it's a very nice dining room. Uh, we have storage down there for our food pantry. We have, you know, just all kinds of use for that basement which is now critical to our ministry <laughs> so you got a bunch of neat historical stuff right here october 6th is the big event you've been celebrating all year long but are these types of things going to be on display october 6th at your special service yes we will have these items uh available downstairs uh in the dining room as well as we'll have some upstairs as uh as well. Uh, we, have, we have books from minutes from the original meetings from mm -hmm. 1924, mm -hmm. 1921. Uh, we have some other interesting news articles and different things like that that we've accumulated. And October the 6th, the public is invited sure. to your uh, kind of grand event in a sense. Um, special speakers are going to be there and a carry and lunch is taking place after. Right. I mean, what's a historical celebration without a carry and lunch? That's just staple in the history of churches. Well, you know, Methodists, when they meet, they like to eat. Well, all <laughs> denominations, when they meet, they like to eat, right? So, so yeah, we're going to do that. We've got a special giveaway in, in, in recognition for our 100th celebration as well. Our district superintendent, Barry Burns, is going to be there to give the, give the message. We have other former district superintendents and former pastors who are going to be present. And so, yeah, it's going to be a grand. And former members, you know, uh, going to be there as well to, to help us celebrate. So that is coming up on October the 6th and it is at St. Mark's United Methodist Church, which is right here in Lima, 110 North Metcalf Street. And uh, you just, uh, if you need more information, call 419-222-3601. 1015 is the service time and you can stay for the carry and lunch afterwards. A great historical opportunity to look back at how God has been present in the north end of Lima for 100 years, thanks to the, the vision of a group of ladies back in the early 1900s. Indeed.